Hey all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we are continuing on with AP Physics 1, um, doing some rotation uh, free response problems. As usual, I encourage you to pause the video, attempt the problem, and then come back after you've tried the problem. Okay, so the cart shown above is made of a block of mass M, and four solid rubber tires each of mass M over 4 and radius R. Each tire may be considered to be a disc. A disc is a rotational inertia of 1 half ML squared, where M is the mass of the and L is the radius of the disc. The cart is released from rest and rolls without slipping from the top of an inclined plane at height h. Express all answers in terms of the given quantities and fundamental constants. Determine the total rotational inertia of all four tires. Well, each tire has a rotational inertia equals ML squared. What's the mass of each tire? It's M over four, Ti or, and then times, uh, I forgot the one half. <laughs> one half um, m over four and then l squared which is the radius which is r squared so that's the each each of them so each of them has one eighth mr squared and if there's four wheels you just add them all up so i multiply this by four so times so times four i get um one half mr squared okay. b determine the speed of the cart when it reaches the bottom of the incline Again, this is an energy transfer problem. From the top, we have a potential energy, and at the bottom, it's it has all kinetic energy. So the total, let's see, okay, the total mass for potential, the potential energy, you at the at the initial, maybe the initial energy, is equal to mgh. Now, what is the mass total mass? Well. The wheels each have mass m over 4, and they add up to 1m, plus the block itself, the cart itself is m, so it's actually 2m is the mass of the cart, g, and then h. Okay, so this is the initial energy. Now at the bottom, it has kinetic energy because the whole cart is moving, plus each of the wheels is turning, so it's rotational energy, and, at, and it lost all of its potential energy, so it has 1 half. The total mass again is 2m v squared plus 1 half i omega squared for the wheels. These are the we rotation of the wheels. Now, um, um, omega I can replace with v over r because the relationship is v is equal to r omega. Okay, So um, this I can simplify. This is just m v squared plus 1 half I, we decided the rotational inertia of all four wheels was one half mr squared. And then uh, omega is v over r quantity squared. So the square r squared and r squared will cancel. So I get an mv squared here. And then this is a one fourth mv squared. So this becomes five fourths mv squared. And that this initial energy has to equal the final energy here. All this kinetic energy has to equal the initial energy. That equals two mgh. The masses cancel if I divide by m. So v squared is equal to uh, eight fifths gh. And so multiplying by four fifths this side. And so v is equal to the square root of eight fifths gh. All right. Good. C. After rolling down the incline across the horizontal surface, the cart collides with a bumper of negligible mass attached to an ideal spring, which is a spring constant k. Determine the distance xm the spring is compressed before the cart and the bumper come to rest. Um, so all of the energy here is going to yeah, all of the energy here is going to go into a collision with the bumper. And so all of that kinetic energy is going to transfer into potential energy in the spring. So I have the total energy, which is 5 fourths mv squared. Is going to equal 1 half k xm squared. Is that right? Is that what I'm thinking? My only thought was, I don't know if energy is conserved in this collision. But momentum is not conserved because the spring is an external force on the system. So it's not going to, um, um, you can't say momentum is conserved. 
Um, yeah, I, I think the energy is conserved. Um, in fact, but I'm going to use 2MGH instead because that's the initial potential energy. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. And then so these two are equal. I'm going to solve for XM. Uh, multiply by 2, divide by k, so xm squared is equal to 4mgh over k. And so xm is the square root of this. Sorry, my handwriting is a little messy. Now assume the bumper has a non-negligible mass. After the collision with the bumper, the spring is compressed to a maximum distance about 90% of the value of xm in part c. Give a reasonable explanation for this decrease. Well, because of the mass, um, we're going to actually lose some energy in the collision because the, um, well, let me think. Yeah, energy is lost in the collision. That's my best explanation. See, the thing is, is with an ideal spring, the spring can't lose energy in a collision because it's not really a thing. But like when I have something with some mass, then then momentum has to be conserved. And that momentum conservation, like, um, basically prevents the energy, the mechanical energy from being conserved there. I don't love that explanation. I want to see if there's a um, better one. Yeah, they really say energy is lost because it's an inelastic collision, because it, it's, it's kind of a sticky collision. Okay, so hope you guys found that helpful. Um, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.